Hi, good evening. This is Dominique from CMRPC. I'm here. And Emily, my colleague Emily is here as well. Okay. Hi, everyone. I see Emily. I don't see Dominique's picture, but there you are. She was hiding. All right. Um, if uh, I hear noise. I hear noise. We got more people coming. Good. Bob Sweet. I recognize Who else we have on there, Dan? How you doing? Long time no see. Where do you want me to sit? Wherever you want. No, no, you're part of the. What? What's that? Someone with a microphone. Okay. You got Anthony Davis, Dominique, and Hillary Clinton, Jenna. Are you mad? Good. I know it's been so long. I think if you retired past your cranberry bog up there, I said, oh, it's so cool. How's it been going? Do you get uh, more than I can eat? I get more than I can eat. I, I, anybody that ever wants them, I just say, come on and grab them. Oh, my God. You don't try to sell them on, on a market, maybe? Too hard, too hard. All right. So run down that list. Ellen's on. It, it's good. You need like. Oh, can you? Yeah. All right. Send, to make any send that to me later. All right, so why don't so we? It's, um, it's a hobby. Why don't we get moving? Um, uh, it doesn't look like everybody has showed up. Um, what I would like to do, except for obviously Dominique and Emily, in the future all meetings I'm, will be held in person. Uh, I'd rather not use the Teams meeting. I think I think it's going to work better if we all start getting together now. And. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done, and it's tough to do it through Teams meetings. Um, the, uh, I guess the first order of business would be uh, the um, going over uh, on the on the uh, committee. Um, we need to elect the elect the officers. Uh, we need uh, a chair, vice chair. Um, is Lonnie on yet? All right. Hopefully, he'll be on in a few minutes. Um, is there a treasurer position? Um, not generally, but what are the positions, Bill? Uh, chair, vice chair, and usually uh, secretary. Secretary, yeah. Hey, Bill. Yes. This is Ellen. Um, yes, I don't know if you can elect anybody that hasn't been appointed yet, and the board select board hasn't appointed anyone yet. Uh, select board's not going to be doing the appointing. Uh, that's a good point, though. We can do it on. The planning board's uh, going to handle the appointing of uh, all the members of the committee. Okay. Um, it's actually under the guise of the planning board. Um, generally, planning boards, um, you know, do the um, handle that. But I mean, in the past with us, the selectmen have done it. But I, I think it's more prudent for the planning board to handle that. Okay, so, so are you going to appoint us before you elect officers? Yeah, it's probably a good idea if we wait till the next meeting. Um, we'll be appointing Monday night, so I'm going to add that to the agenda. Um, apparently, Gail's not around, so it'll be one of those 24-hour things. Um, but, um, you know, that's pretty much uh, being going to be handled by the board anyways directly, but... Uh, so Great. if you want to start talking about, Dominique, if you want to start going over the uh, survey, um, I can have the, I can have, if in, unless there's uh, adverse attention to it, I can have the planning board vote on Monday night to approve that and, and release a survey. Okay, wonderful. Uh, if we could circle back. Um, yeah, so I, 
Is everybody is everybody who's on the call um, who's in planning to be on the committee? Were you all here at the last meeting? Or do we need to do a recap? Uh, Pat and, and um, Rihanna weren't. Okay, we'll make it brief then. So, um, so I'm Dominique. I'm from the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. I'm joined by my colleague um, Emily Globitz, who is my project partner, and we've been tasked with helping the town of Menden uh, develop develop its master plan. So, my agency um, back last fall, we were awarded a grant to help with uh, the first phase of this. Um, we provided matching funds, and uh, and we're delighted to have received the opportunity to help you guys with this um, as your designated planning entity. So this first phase of funding is for housing, land use, and economic development, as well as development of a vision statement uh, and goals and objectives therein. Um, the work will build on the, the great effort that you guys put in and started in 2013 and 2014 that stalled um, for a variety of reasons. So we're not starting completely from scratch, although all that information will need to be updated. Um, I'm pleased to report also that uh, Bill and my team, we've been working together and we just submitted a grant application to fund uh, phase two. So um, if awarded, uh, it, that would um, provide hopefully provide funding for the remaining four chapters of the master plan. So uh, really excited um, at the prospect of being able to do this for you with you in just two phases. Um, so I think that's that's where we're at. So uh, do I, did somebody have a question? Did I hear? Okay, in that case, I'll proceed. Um, just feel free to raise your hand or stop me if I'm uh, going too fast. Um, so at the last meeting, we touched on a number of things, but we waited on a couple of items for the for the group to convene, for this particular group to convene. So we just ran through some of the preparatory efforts that CMRPC has been doing um, while the committee was getting established. So we've created a mendedmasterplan.com website that um, is we'll be using and looking to you to help us use to drive traffic to the initiative. Um, there's social media pages on uh, Facebook and Instagram, which already have a good number of followers. And we've drafted, um, drafted a survey and received uh, several sets of feedback from different um, committees, boards, and uh, personnel, and have incorporated that feedback. So that's pretty much where we are tonight. Um, the vision is to meet, you know, meet at least monthly. Monthly would be typical for um, the pace that we usually end up meeting at with our other master plan committees. Um, this meeting was held uh, held as an interim meeting in order to hopefully launch the survey. So that's where we are. <clears throat> um, in terms of the survey, um, I will walk through an overview of the comments received. Um, actually, as well as the general survey, since a couple of you weren't here last meeting. So the survey, um, I'm going to try to figure out how to screen share as we do this too. So the survey, um, it is specific to the, almost completely specific to the elements which are currently funded. Um, so we developed a survey for land use, housing, and economic development with a few sort of background questions just to ease people into it and also collect just the tiniest bit of information about the survey respondents. Um, the town is also currently uh, digging into an open space and recreation plan update, either an update or the first one, I can't recall. And they've asked the committee, the group to consider incorporating survey questions for that planning effort as well, uh, you know, across, across towns and cities and, and everywhere. I know a lot of, since our planning has moved online, I know people are having some survey fatigue. So the idea was to consolidate um, as possible the, the two efforts in terms of community outreach at least. So um, in addition to the three chapters, I've also added an open space and recreation section um, to, to the survey as well as tweaked a few questions to make sure that, you know, uh, there was a little bit more open space and recreation uh, uh, opportunity identified in the survey. Um, so like multiple choice, et cetera. Um, uh, let's see. So um, the survey, again, it starts off, let me try to again, figure out how to screen share just one second. Um, here we go.
Hmm. Can everybody see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. All right, so I, I believe I've incorporated all of your feedback. Where I didn't, it's because something um, either conflicted with it or made it unnecessary. What's really the, if it's not incorporated. Um, so, uh, you know, first question um, we were asked, you know, it, it was a little confusing, you know, what is your connection to Mandan? We also lumped in some uh, opportunity to uh, identify a workplace like um, and that as a connection. So we removed that because it was a little bit confusing. Um, there was some, a couple of people mentioned that some of the select all that apply questions weren't that helpful in some cases. They said, you know, it'd be much better to have this be a ranking question and we want to know what the top priorities are. So I changed that in a few places, especially number two, which is one a few people called out to my attention. Um, uh, let's see. And um, there was one question that came from the, I think, the Economic Development Committee. They asked us to uh, consider something about light pollution. I took a stab at this, but I have not been privy to the ongoing, potential ongoing conversations about light pollution. So here's what I put. Um, I put this under land use. Light pollution is, mark all the answers with which you agree. And I'll be, please uh, tell me if this hits on the flavor of ongoing discussions. Light pollution is unacceptable in all areas of town, acceptable in non-residential areas of town, acceptable in residential areas of town, acceptable in all areas of town, acceptable if necessary for pedestrian vehicle safety, and accessible, acceptable if it is necessary for business visibility. So my intention with this was just to try to lay it under which circumstances light pollution is or is not uh, something people can live with. Does that hit on the flavor of what the EDC or others might be discussing in town with regard to pollution? I mean, if, you know, we don't allow any longer light to emit to another property. So. I'm not sure of how much farther that question is going to take us. Okay. Unfortunately, a lot of the lighting plans that were done that people get concerned about were pri previous to this board, and, and um, there's not much we can do about it now. Uh, but as the future going, we we try and keep the lighting within the uh, the principal uh, property. Okay. Do you, Bill? Do you see any way in which this question sh could be revised to be relevant or more pointed, or do you think that there's no place in it? I, the survey for it. Are you asking in general, or are you asking Bill? Uh, and anybody. As uh, if I, may. I was just answering that question in a, in a general term that I think we need to be careful what we put in the survey because this thing has gotten way too long and we're going to lose people and never get these results. I mean, and this thing has grown to uh, to a point now where, I mean, how many pages is this thing? Way too long. 29. 29 pages of questions. That's long. Yeah, I mean, we need to. I think what we need to do is we need to. I filled it out. Be more specific as to in in kind of incorporate these questions into a narrower base because we're never going to get anyone to fill the 29 pages of a survey. I, this is not going to happen. I mean, it's going to be a difficult task. Um, but. I mean, I'm not that the, you know, this is something we all need to agree on. I'm just giving my two cents, but I, I think we've kind of lost, you, you know, we're going to lose what we're trying to uh, gather for information here. Maybe we're drilling it down too much um, and there'll be, you know, further opportunity be between workshops and stuff that we can attack some of these areas. They don't need to all be in the survey. You know, the, it's, I mean, I read the survey and I'm like, 
I, I'm usually pretty, pretty good at filling out surveys, and I'm like, I wouldn't answer, you know, 29 pages is going to be, you know, some people uh, it will miss our elderly community. It's definitely, they're not going to sit there and fill out 29 pages. It's just my opinion, but. I agree 100%. I've been, I've been through this a couple times before. We tried to make them quick and resolute surveys. I mean, they were reasonable enough to put in the mail. Um, we couldn't even mail this thing. It cost a fortune. <laughs> yeah, certainly I don't think the vision from the consultant tag was, uh, I don't think it was to mail it. Uh, no, I'm just saying, it, 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 you know, in previous ones where we got great response, they weren't this broad, you know, and I think that's where we're, we're, we're drilling down a little too much, I think. And, you know, you're not going to get all your answers in one survey. I think if you allow people to give you a guidance on what they're looking for Menden to be, the other stuff we can drill down in workshops and, and community uh, gatherings um, and, you know, maybe we do additional surveys and break it down further later. I just think you send one survey out and that's 29 pages long, we're not going to get the returns we've seen in the past. It's just my opinion, but I mean, we had great returns of the last two surveys. And um, I just, those were mailed and we actually got them mailed back to us. And, uh, you know, they were overwhelming the number. I forget the exact percentages now, but it was overwhelming. It was something people normally don't see for a return on a survey. So we would certainly be happy to, you know, this needs to work for Mendon, and I agree. This is this is getting rather long. The last thing that the long survey needed was to incorporate an additional section. Um, so, so that is one consideration. If you prefer to, you know, have the conservation recreation uh, planning effort and that do a separate survey that area we can tackle. You could say, hey, that's you know, we're not on that section right now. Let's just take it out. Um, that's step one. Um, step two, I mean, we can, this is modeled based on you know, other surveys that we're using for other master plans we're working on. Um, obviously, we've tweaked it for Menden, um, but it's kind of the level of detail that we've been pursuing in other communities. If you, if, you know, we're What's happy, we're happy, we're happy to dial it back, but we're going to need some help. Is there, is there, um, is there, has there been decent return on that um, in other communities? Yes. So um, the two community, I'm working with two communities right now, you guys being one of them. Um, one of them's not so long. Emily, do you happen to know how Boylston did on their survey? Yeah, they got about a 10% return rate, which is usually what we aim for. Um, it was a little bit shorter, though, than this one, for sure. Uh, how much shorter, Emily? Half or just like 30% shorter? Yeah, at? maybe like 30%. That's a good shorter. Like that. mm -hmm. So if we could start by shape, I mean, either you could dial it back in terms of specificity, right? That, Or you could reduce, eliminate it, the add-on section or both. Um, no. What do we do? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's what you would relatively expect, I think, would be 10%. Like when we did ours, ours is up around 40% return, and they had to mail it back to us. Um, so it was, uh, we had great returns on our, our survey and gathered a lot of detail. I know everybody wants their part, but we can run workshops on open space. We can run workshops on economic development. And we can do more information gathering at those levels, I think, than trying to drill it into a survey. And um, and uh, I just, I don't think the returns, even if you get 10%, I mean, is that enough for the community? Um, to be honest, if I may, that is uh, 
that is higher than the expectation of my communities. The, the sample size that I've been told to look was 5%. So, um, you know, it, at 40%, that's, that's more than even all, you know, the, that's more than one person per household. That's more than one. Yeah, I mean, we did very. More than just we, the adults. So that's, I, like, I think we should be very careful to set that, not set that as an expectation, because it, I've never seen anything like that. In, uh, in, believe me, we were surprised, but it was. Yeah, great job. But, yeah, it was, it was coming in like crazy. And uh, we have those results somewhere right now. And uh, the, 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 the level of return was just mo greatly more than expected, but. Um, so, hi, this is Ann Mazar. Um, if you want to take out the open space um, questions, I think that we can incorporate some of the questions into the survey itself. So, um, I think that could work. Yeah, I mean, you have a lot of substance there, and I'm not sure between, you know, every section you kind of look at and say, well, geez, you really don't want to eliminate anything. Um, maybe it's just determining, um, you know, some of the questions have like a broad range of answers. Maybe it's even just drilling down on some of that, you know, it, uh, it, you know, maybe we don't need to be that broad, or if it is that broad, maybe it's uh, type in what's more important, not list 20 things, you know, and then rate them by by uh, importance. Maybe the, let the people tell us what's important to them. If there's some agreement on that front, we can certainly take some of the multiple choice and, and turn them into open-ended questions. So on, on the open-ended questions, when you're when you're compiling the data, does it make it oh, harder? That, yeah, that's you're right. Absolutely. That's a good point. It would make it harder to compile the data, yeah. The only way we'll be able to depict it in a user-friendly way would be as like a word cloud where words that were Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. That's not going to work. Yeah. No. So maybe. Uh, hey, that's why we're having this conversation. I, um, I do think when I looked at the survey, there were some questions that had significant overlap, and that there was some redundancy yeah. that could probably be taken out. To your point of, you know, maybe instead of drilling down as far in this initial survey, um, survey, reduce some of that redundancy and drill down further, either with a subsequent survey that drills down based on the answers that we receive for more broader questions, or in in a workshop. In a workshop, yeah. yeah. Yeah, another like, suggestion, you know, might be, you know, I think the the multifamily section, I think, is about eight or nine pages, you know, rather than separating all those. If, I think most people understand what the different types are, you know, if 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 it were, a, you know, a checkbox type of things, you know, in favor or, or not in favor, you know, that that might be a way to to consolidate a little bit. Are those the um, visuals you're referring to, like the um, photographs? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was on a separate page, and you know, they're the di different styles, like townhouses and um, cottage style, and you know, all of that. You know, if we're on a single page, just the, the types. You know, that would probably consolidate. Sure, you don't need the photos in there, but. I actually like the photos, but I think you can make them yeah. like you could ask all the questions and on the next page you could say see photos for reference, but they could be small, oh, right. like, you know, um, you could do all the photos in one page, all the questions in one page and you've cut down the pages if, just there. If I may, so this, um, and push back if, if there's another way that you as a group want to approach this, but the, the nine, I don't know, 85% of people that we reach are probably never going to see it formatted like this. So um, they'll be clicking through buttons on a cell phone or on a computer screen. Um, and uh, and you're right, it, it doesn't print it out like that. It doesn't format very well. The program doesn't give us a lot of options. One page, you know, one or two questions takes up a whole page. It's not, it's just not uh, economically or environmentally reasonable to print them all out. But so I would, I would just, uh, Consider it this that format is a sort of a backup. Uh, that's not the primary format most people will see. 
Okay. Now, well, how do you expect to distribute this? In, in, in Bill, what, what's been the experience on response rate? I know that, you know, we, we had them at a table at, you know, one of the one of the votes that was, I don't know if it was a um, town elections or, a, you know, a presidential election or something like that, but that seemed to, to get a lot of good results. Were, were there other means of distributing that, that you found was successful? Well, they, they, we're trying to do this all online this time, Pat, um, without having to incur the additional cost of mailings or, but yeah, in the past we've done, we've done that or, um, you know, uh, we had at town meetings and, and such, we had copies of the survey and envelopes that they could take them, fill them out and return them. And so we did a lot of uh, work in that area. I guess the question is going to be, I'm more concerned because, it, you know, we live in a mobile environment now. This survey is going to be tough on a phone. Now that, I mean, I'm not sure how it's going to display on it, but that length of a survey might be difficult to fill out on a phone. They definitely have to be on a computer. And most people, you know, they they work through their phone these days. Um, I mean, we can we can send this one out there. I'm not opposed to it, but and see what type of returns we're getting. And then maybe if we don't get enough response or enough information detail back, maybe we circle back with specific surveys on specific, uh, like open space and economic development or, or zoning or what have you. And we, um, we do it that way. We do that within the workshops as we go along. Uh, if I may, it looks like we have a couple of hands, but I, it sounds to me like the bulk of the committee at least really want, or the, the potential envisioned committee, the people who are here tonight rather, want to see this dial back in some way. So I think, I think rather than just rush to get this out the door, um, maybe just give us a little time with it and we'll, we'll retool it. Um, may I offer, may uh, Ellen, could we have a comment from Ellen who has her hand raised? Hi, thank you. Um, I wasn't sure what your timeline was for getting this survey ready, um, but we do have a special election coming up. And if there was a flyer maybe with a QR code to the survey, that could be easily taken at the door before the voters come in. Um, I think we already have one prepared. We've been working in the background on this. So I think we, if you can have it quickly, we're already half done. Yeah, and that flyer, I mean, that election's on the 29th of this month. So we could we could certainly put it at the door and let people take it um, as they're coming in or as they're leaving the, the polling place. OK, uh, to do that, so we would need to rework the survey and get it approved um, in it and, and in advance of would you say it's the 29th. Yes. OK. Yeah, we could. Uh, that's is that a Tuesday, Ellen? Yes, it is. Um, I think we have a planning board meeting on the 28th. Um, if everybody is willing to meet at uh, a uh, five or six o'clock, we could probably just determine whether to, if we got the information out to everybody, you know, reworked it a little bit, got the information out and got some feedback back. I think we could. Um, the meeting just before my planning board meeting on the 28th and just that'll be the topic of the that night will be the uh, survey the only thing is if there is significant changes that are requested or edits come in that weren't sent to us in advance we'll need some time to turn them around um, I'm hoping I'm hoping that we can work offline and, and start getting these results and I'll continue to, to email everybody until that point in time um, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to, uh, it, I can move it up a week to the 21st. I think it's the 21st. Is that a Monday? 21st. Yes, it's a Monday. 
um, because I think we meet on, uh, well, today's the second. Uh, I think you're meeting on the 14th. Yeah, we meet on the 14th and 28th this month, I think. So if that's the case, um, we can meet on the 21st. And like I said, I, 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 I'd like to see that as an in-person meeting at this point. I think we'll get more accomplished. Does that work for everybody? Yeah, it works for me. Sure does. We also have a hand raised but from Tony. Um, first, if any, if that 21st does not work for anybody, can you just call and speak to that now? The 21st, the 21st works provided that we have a revised copy before then so that we can have that at the meeting to review, correct? Okay, yeah, we can provide the revised copy. We will just need to establish a timeline for getting, getting the comments back, so that's not a problem. Um, does I one... Know, once, yeah, Sorry, once again, I make it like, you know, the comments got to be back by the 14th. And I think that's that's reasonable enough time. Today's uh, the second. Uh, so the 14th, 12 days. Wait, are they at, they're, I thought they were revising it first and then we're seeing revised. Well, yeah, she's going to make some changes. And how long do you think if we get any revision done now, uh, Dominique? I will take a, my best crack at it next week. Um, so I can send that to you. Let me just pull up my calendar. Um, it's Wednesday. I can I can start working on it on Monday and give you the revisions by Wednesday the night. Oh, you have one now with the additional stuff that we we edited from last time, correct? Correct. Why don't we just work from that and determine instead of any revisions we're talking about tonight, because I don't think we have a whole committee on anyways. So why don't we just work from what you already revised and we'll get a, the group here that shows up, you know, we'll have copies of that and, and any revision requests we can put in one Word document or Excel spreadsheet and we'll attack them and get it done. You know, it's... Uh, so you'd like the copy that was the copy that's been updated based on the last round of edits? That's correct. Okay. And let's work. Let's work from that and determine what we think is the best avenue to to condense it some. Okay. Um, by when can the so we can send that out after this meeting? Um, and yeah. when when can the committee or the group provide edits for us to incorporate? I'm yeah, I'm thinking if we put a halt on the, the 14th, if they don't speak before the 14th, um, then, you know, that's it. So those are the only revisions we're going to consider. If the group is comfortable with that, I'm sure that my it works for my team. So. It, they'll give you a week to be able to make any re revisions that we... Uh, and I just put them in, and if you can mark them in red, the changes, and then we can look at it as a committee and determine whether we want those changes or not. Does that work for you, Dominique? Uh, it does. We'll be working online, but we'll make sure to be able to speak to which edits. Yeah, you'll be working online. I'm going to try and get the rest of the committee here so we can face one another and answer these questions a lot easier. And Wonderful. Um, I mean, I can't redline the document because it's an online format um, and it would take a lot of time just to, to it would be a waste of your consultant dollars for me to, to mock up a document for those purposes, but I can certainly speak to it. Um, yeah, we don't need to waste any money. We need all we can get. So you got it. You got it. We're getting on a budget here. So 
Okay, so I think we, I don't want to have lost, we had um, Tony. Tony, did you get a chance to speak? Uh, I didn't get a chance to speak, but this conversation has answered all of my questions. Um, but I do want to confirm and clarify that when we are revising, are we looking to make this more concise, not including the, the um, open space? So what I mean by that is if we feel so that there's a question or two that can come out, should we note that as well? Yes, absolutely. I think that's what we're trying to do is to get this to a format where we're going to get the most response, you know, and, and I think by condensing it, that'll happen. Now, I don't want to leave out anything important, but I want to target it towards the most important stuff, you know, um, and I think we need to look at some of the items maybe we have on there or how we've, you know, drill down the questions. Like I said, if you've got, you ask somebody a question, you give them 10 possibilities, is that a little overreach? I mean, does Menden significantly have those many different sections that we have to gauge importance of? You know, some towns obviously have a lot more exposure than Menden does, so I think we need to fit Menden's probably going to more lean towards an open space type of community than, you know, um, than some of the other areas we're looking at. So we'll look to you folks um, as, you know, the experts of, of your town, your community, and, and also what you'd like to see and just send us your comments and, and we'll do our very best to balance them out. I'll work closely with Bill if there's anything that seems to be in conflict um, and then we'll bring it to you at the next meeting to, to approve and go through. Yeah, and like I said, the planning board will do its appointments on Monday night um, or a week from Monday on the 14th. Um, if there's an issue at that, I mean, if we're concerned about getting the appointments accomplished, um, I can have the planning board, if anyone wants to make recommendations to to the the offices on the on the committee, I can have the planning board approve them. I'll raise your hand at once. I honestly don't understand what that means. So I didn't know. In other words, if we took in tonight, who was interested in in certain um, positions on the committee? I'm just trying to figure I out see. Yeah, a yeah. way. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, this does run under the guise of the planning board. And, and um, What members do you have missing tonight and on the committee? Any that might want to? I mean, we, got, we now have like 17 members on the committee. So I'm not sure how many are on here tonight. <laughs> Should we do a round of introductions? I know that was on our agenda. I might have skipped over it accidentally. Just while I'm thinking about it, uh, Dominique, that uh, that report came back from uh, the LRC or whatever they are. Um, I'll uh, I'll email it to both you and Emily to take a look at. Um, they gave us like I don't know, like 20 things, and asked us to put like 10 at, you know, the 10 most important for Kim and I to go over. Um, but okay. I'd like you to see the results of that, but. Okay, wonderful. Um, that sounds perfect. Just uh, send it our way, and I'll be very curious as well to see what was um, what was flagged, and also your perspective on it, both Bill and as a and the broader group. Yep. Yep. All right. I mean, if, if everyone wants to go around and uh, introduce themselves, we can do that. Or does everybody want to wait till we, we have an in-person meeting? I think it's going to be difficult to do it via uh, a Teams meeting. I think we should just wait to the next meeting to do that. Um, he'll give me a list. Uh, Dan will give me a list of who's on the meeting. So um, I'll know and I can let everybody know uh, 
how many attended. So I'll send it on an email. I won't name any names. I'll just put how many attended. Um, and then, like I said, my goal is to have everybody meet in person going forward and and hopefully start planning some workshops and stuff and gather as much information as we can. Um, I do know, I don't know if they ha there's plans for yet. Are they having the summer fest this year, Dan? Yeah. It's done. They canceled it? It's a matter of finding people that are willing to put in the work. It'll come back, but. Am I going to have to get involved again? Jeepers. <laughs> I got enough things. I got enough irons in my fire. <laughs> we actually started that, and uh, it's tragic to see that it lost its way. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, I'd like to start some workshops up. We'll have to figure out how we're going to do that. But I, I generally think we get a better return if we're, you know, if we get some booths at events and you'll have to figure out what events across the summer we'll be doing. But um, you can probably uh, gather interest and get everybody going. I mean, I think that's a problem is getting the community involved. And I know Michelle Sanford at, at the town cry will do as, probably as many articles as I want her to do. She'll squeeze them in the cry for me, so. Wonderful. So we can um, work with you to come up with, you know, a multi-prong approach to community outreach and, and just including promotion of the survey. So we've seen, you know, obviously online is a big deal nowadays, but mixed approaches like Bill mentioned, you know, the community events are huge. Your upcoming special election, that has potential to be huge. Radio, everything from radio shows to, to press releases to electronic signs to the message that's running on your you know, cable access, anything that you can think of, um, please start brainstorming and we'll come up with a really, really robust outreach strategy with you guys. Well, uh, Ellen, um, will, will they allow a table set up at the uh, town election? Yeah, yep, that's no problem. As long as they're not interfering with voters, it's fine. Yeah, because we did Usually that. Usually they uh, set up just out, just either just outside the doors if it's a nice day, or just inside the doors. Yeah, because I did. We did that uh, at the last survey. We um, we set up a table, and I actually, if I can find it, we had a master plan committee banner. It was pretty sharp. I don't know where it disappeared to, but I'll see if I can locate it. Yeah, uh, and I, I I truly think that a QR code for um, the people that want to use their phones, it's it's really a good idea just to, they can scan it and they have the survey right right away. Yeah, and, and, and uh, to be honest with you, a lot of people take that and email it to themselves if they find it too cumbersome on the phone anyways. Right. So they can do it from their computer. But yeah, I think that's a great idea. And uh, let me tell you what, Dominique's already done some great stuff as far as press releases and, and uh, stuff like that that we worked on in the background. Um, and uh, some of the stuff you've seen on Facebook and some uh, I put out there, um, but, you know, she also did the press release in uh, the town crier. We should probably follow up with just some type of release specifically for the survey. I can share that on my town clerk page. Sounds good. Can we get that on the main page too, Dan? I can post it every Sunday, yeah. Well, I think we should have something that says uh, master plan survey right on the front page. Yeah, we can put that on like the slideshow. Once it's ready, we can that other stuff. Sure. Attention. I think you can probably also put a link to it on the senior centers. Um, they have that newsletter that goes out. Um, that maybe yeah. you could put put something in there. You're a social media guy. The the uh, see. Once we have the survey, yeah, I would do um, like sponsored social media on Facebook. 
I, I would even, I, you know, I can contact the athletic groups and see if they'll put it on their websites too, you know, Muser and all them. Um, yeah, I think all those groups have a decent Facebook following. Yeah. We'll post a link on the master plan site. And they it. Yeah. Does anybody have a strong working relationship with any administrators uh, on the school side? That could be an effective way to help get the wording out to parents and, and even youth. Depends how they vote. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I, I mean, his Dan's father is, uh, I think he's running the ship over there these days, so. <laughs> I can. Um... I, I certainly, I, I was active in the athletic community for many years, and th those always seem to be people that we miss um, in town government, and they don't show up at town meetings, they don't show up at, you know, so, the, the, you know, the kids are busy. I, you know, I was that parent, you know, you get busy and uh, it, um, so I think that's the out outreach we need. If we can get them uh, to, to follow on it, um, hopefully we can anyway. So. Um, I, I was just gonna say there might be a good opportunity at the ball fields um if somebody you know set up to get parents who are just waiting for games and you know to maybe jump in and take the survey and um we could certainly think about incentivizing people um doing a lottery or something um you know for like off-site you know um survey taking so maybe open a coffee bar at this school i don't know just a thought some of our communities do raffles. Um, the, uh, sometimes people will, maybe somebody on the committee or in the broader group has a business and they'd like to provide a gift certificate or or the coffee bar. That's a nice idea too. Um, we've seen hot chocolate and things like that, depending on the time of year. Well, I will, you know, at the next meeting when we when we gather, I, I think we should take a list of people who are willing to commit time and, and and do that you know and certainly we have baseball softball season uh that's going to go across the summer and um and you know the fall there's always soccer i mean soccer is like a year-round sport now so and um you know the, there's a i think it's saturdays the saturdays at the ball at I mean, I think unfortunately baseball is going to be ending right around. Yeah, the but they'll have they, they'll have the All Stars. But there'll be summer. I mean, we have some concerts at the beach. Hmm. Um, that might be a good opportunity. Yeah. Um, and soccer fest, but it'll be in October. But uh, what days does the town use a soccer field on 140? Um, is that Saturday or Sunday? I I couldn't tell you. I'll check. Ann probably knows, but um, we can always find that out in. Um, we could set up a table up there at the soccer field. So there's plenty of opportunity. Uh, and if we just have some of those flyers that have the QR code, you know, we can just hand them out. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not going to be able to do paper ones because that defeats the purpose of the online survey. You know, it's kind of like, Give them the QR code, ask them to fill out the survey. Does the senior center have computers for use? They do, okay. Yeah, I believe so. The senior center have computers, Dan? I think so. I'm not 100% sure if they're open yet. But. That's, that's what I thought. Once the senior center opens, that would be a good place to have a survey because they go there, they- and Well, they, they and just have the lunch. Yeah, lunch. Yeah, they, while they're having lunch, they can fill out the survey. Yeah, they are open. Yeah, they, do they, Lonnie, do they have computers there? Is Lonnie still on? Did he ditch us? They do, definitely. Oh, they, they have computers, okay. Because yeah. the, the, um, the high yes, school kids teach the seniors how to do the computers. Oh, yes, there you go. What'd you say, Lonnie? Yes, yes, they do. Okay, thank you. And the the um, library has a bunch of computers, too, so, you know, people could 
see the survey right next to the computer station. Yeah, that's Take a great it. idea. I'm just not sure if we want children lining up to right. do our survey. That'd be the problem. No, but the QR code would work good for that. Yeah, but the question is, you know, do you want kids filling out the survey or I get a little treacherous there? <laughs> <laughs> You well, maybe we hand it out to adults at the a circulation desk only. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm guessing no yeah, kid is going to sit through 29 place. pages. Downstairs is for kids. Oh, some of them, might, some of them will do it just to uh, put some baloney answers in there. Believe me, they'll go through 29 pages. That'll yeah. be the adventure. Kids are upstairs. <laughs> and that'll be a blast for coding on our side. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, why is there writing for more free candy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps there is a role for, you know, usually we'll at least, usually there's some need for some hard copies of the survey. It's not the way things are going generally, but I, we always put them up somewhere. In the cover page to the survey, we've listed a few places. I'm in town, people can pick up hard copies. So we can re, we can revisit that as we make our edits or you make your edits and tell us how to edit it. And, um, and think, you know, uh, so well, we put the, the hard copies. Yeah, if we put the QR code on the hard copies, then they'd be able to go and do the online survey. Um, maybe they have an easier time filling out the survey with a hard copy in front of them. But I don't think you really want, you know, unless you, re, you had a senior or someone who really couldn't work a computer. Um, and then we'd have to figure out how we got that input. Yeah, we would have to manually input it, which is for a select number is totally fine and we're happy to do it. And the other thing, if you rely heavily on paper copies is somebody needs to replenish them and monitor them. So, um, you know, that's a task in and of itself. Um, but we can we can cross that path when we get there, if you like. Um, I think there, there are a couple of other things on our side. We had potentially put on the agenda, but this seems to be the primary thing that needs focused at this point in time. I think the things like the benchmark review and some other small items we wanted to discuss can be tabled if the committee's or group is comfortable with them. What were the other ones? I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. Um, um, there was something for a, a benchmark review. Um, in the coming weeks, we'll be bringing a, a consolidated list of all of the... We've been reviewing all of the plans and studies prepared by or for the town as far back as we can find them. So we've been consolidating and excerpting all of the recommendations so that you have, you and we have a benchmark to figure out, okay, what's been recommended, what's been done, what does, what is still left to accomplish or what might no longer be relevant. So as from the consultant side, it gives us this, at least a sense of, okay, well, what of the people who have come before us and made recommendations, what have they recommended? And, you know, a lot of those will probably still be relevant. Well, we, um, we're we also going to have the opportunity with, uh, and this might help relieve some of the costs and stuff. Uh, speaking with Kim uh, yesterday, we got approved for our assistant planner. Um, oh, congratulations. For 75000 you know, for a certain amount of hours. So we're going to have the opportunity to work some of these things uh, that need changes through this planner that obviously is a background in this. Um, you know, and I'd like to start seeing pretty much all our, our, our zoning stuff going directly through that planner. Um, and then they can bring it to the board. Um, but, uh, yeah, men has needed a planner for quite some time, so. Is this the town's first planner? That's just tremendous that that's, um, that's being stuck. It's me. <laughs> it's been just me writing bylaws. <laughs> well, I'm excited for you guys to have uh, additional staff capacity. <laughs> I mean, uh, Shirley Smith, Liana Moore here, and Patrick Doherty were a great assistance in, in pulling them together, to be honest. Bob, with for a while, was on the dream team. Yeah, Bob was <laughs> on the dream team too back then. So, but, um, you know, it, it was it was definitely more difficult than hopefully it will be when we have a planner available. Okay, and the the only other thing is, um, I 
And again, I, from my perspective, this comes as a, at this point, secondary considerations to the survey. And we were trying, the, it took a little while, I know, for the town to find the people to sit on the committee. So um, we're trying to, just want to try to recapture a little bit of the grant period that um, was expended already. So some, the sooner we launch the survey, you know, the, the better we'll be doing on recapturing some of that time. Um, but the other things that I wanted to mention, you know, um, please check out the social media and the web page, you know, mendenmasterplan.com. Uh, search it on Facebook, Mend and Master Plan, you'll find it. Same on Instagram. And just take a look, and um, especially at the website, and just make sure it's what what you would want out there. What I mean, we've taken put together a basic template for you to review and consider and provide feedback on. So if there's something you think isn't quite the right color of Menden or something that we overlooked or something that's not on point, tell us and we'll fix it. Um, to that point on the website, there's also a page to provide, um, to talk a little bit about you guys and all the hard work that you um, are putting in on this committee. So send us a couple of one to three sentences about yourself, either your motivations for being on the committee or your role with the town or, you know, if you're comfortable and we'll include your information on the web page as well as the part of the planning team. So. Is there is there any other topics that anyone would like to discuss? I was just going to ask a quick question on the website. Are the are the links, they looked beautiful. I was actually really impressed. Um, are the links supposed to be active? Because I did try to click on some of the links and they, I don't know if it was my computer or that the website is still under development, but they didn't work. Let me call, let me call up the website as we speak. Um, I'm curious which ones you might be referring to. Uh, if it's something like the survey, that wouldn't be live um, because uh, yeah. it's not approved. If by you me. go to it, I was at agenda and I, I didn't get anything clicking on that. Hmm. I'm trying to call it up. I'm having some technical difficulties accessing the web outside of Teams right now. Um, I will double check everything and if and make sure that the links are um, links are active. Yeah, everybody, try and be active on your social media. Um, you know, make sure you like and share the page. Get as many people as you know to to like and share the page. I mean, that's basically how this word is going to travel. And, you know, share the page often, you know, as, as things change on the, on the page, we definitely want to be keeping people in Menden up to date. Don't just share it once and say, uh, forget about it. Or invite people to the page even, you know. Try and get as much social media. I don't use Instagram, so um, I'm not even sure what it looks like, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that to the millennials, but... Uh, <laughs> So uh, it, um, but certainly Facebook, you can just, you know, get as many people uh, across it as you can. Any other questions? I mean, I th I think that the committee has now grown. You know, I had the opportunity to speak at the um, the town meeting we had recently, and I really kind of pressured and it seems like everything took off after that um you know actually it started before that a little bit uh with the releases that i had on um facebook and that you had provided dominique and the town and the article and the cry everything seemed to come together at once and um you know now we're at 17 members so i think uh I think we're fully stocked as every, long as everybody hangs in there, um, we should be able to get this done, uh, hopefully quickly, um, or as quick as we can, obviously. But um, So I think we're positioned right to finally get this thing accomplished. And like I said, I, from a planning board level, we're gonna be overseer. We're not, I'm not gonna allow it to fail this time. You know, it's, it's had two other shots that didn't work out. This time it's gonna get wrapped up. Well, we're delighted, absolutely delighted to be working with you on it and seeing this through to fruition. Um, I think it's going to be a fun process and we'll do our best to make it as efficient as possible and as fun as possible. So. All right. Well, if, if that's uh, it, I, I mean, we can't take a vote to adjourn the meeting, but 
You can leave the meeting, I guess. <laughs> it's it on our side. Unless anybody has any other questions, um, you know, we'll uh, we'll plan on getting a repeat everything together by, and you can send them either directly to Dominique if you don't have her email address, or if you can send them to me. Um, you know, some people went outside and send them to different people. I'd rather to gather the information myself so I have it because I got a notebook here and I try and capture everything that we're doing along the way. So to refer back to later. Um, so it's easier if I get it first and then I just, I, I get it, I make sure I get that information over to Dominique. I promise not to alter it in any way. <laughs> we have a hand from Tony. Yeah, so two quick questions. Can we just confirm the the next meeting date just to make sure I'm you know, I've got that, but also when we need the survey in by. So those two dates, can we just reconfirm them? I will send out the survey, the, the revised survey to you after this meeting tonight. And we need the feedback by the 14th in order to incorporate your feedback by a, the meeting on the 21st. And what time is that meeting on the 21st? 7 o'clock and it'll be in person. Thank you. One thing I will note is that that will not give you, if you provide the information to us on the 14th, so to give us one week before the next meeting to incorporate the feedback, it doesn't give you folks time to review what we've done or your peers' feedback, your, your colleagues' feedback that we've incorporated. Um, what day is the 14th? What is that? Monday. It's a Monday. Um, we could always say the 11th before the weekend, if that works any better, and then maybe uh, up the date a few days from the 14th, and, um, from the 21st. Um, I, I, you know, it, it's, I think. I think what we really need to do is that at the next meeting, before we leave, decide what exactly is going to be in there. So you can go and make the changes and we can put this up. So whether you give it back to us with a couple of days of spare, I mean, it, you know, this isn't a study gram. I'm not taking an SAT. I can go through the survey in a couple hours and, and, and pretty much figure out what I need. I think if you get it back to us, day or two to spare, I think we should be able to come to the meeting prepared to make our decisions on what the survey needs to be. I think that's fair. All right. So we'll go with that timeline. Okay, if we can turn it around sooner to everybody to provide more review time, certainly we will. So we'll do our best. Um, uh, you're doing a great job so far. I mean, and uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, we can get this wrapped up at the next meeting so we can get it out there. And then hopefully, further comment. I'm sorry, I see your hand is still raised. No, sorry about that. All right. Bill, can you confirm those time dates? Talking the 12th and the 20, 21st meeting, and the 12th to have the, uh, the 14th, I mean, Ted. So the 14th is to review the revisions, and the 21st is to uh, vote on? Yeah, well, it'll be the meeting. Okay. I think the 14th, we're submitting revisions to you. Yes. We're not actually going to be having an in person meeting. Right, no. The 21st, we're going no, to No, I just, right. do, 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 you know, revive uh, suggestive revisions by the 14th. Let's not make this more difficult than it needs to be. Suggested revisions by the 14th, meeting on the 21st. Okay, thank you. If there is any, if there is nothing else, meeting adjourned. Non-meeting, meeting adjourned.
Yeah, not meaning meaning adjourned. <laughs> hey, have a uh, wonderful couple of weeks, everybody. Dominique, Thanks. I'll be talking to you in the next couple of days too. By the way, I, thank I'm you, Dominique. Send, I'm going to send you that information. Uh,